German rearmament in the Wehrmacht era included the creation of a new branch called the Mobile Troops. By 1935, the Mobile Troops included tank, motorized infantry, armored train, anti-tank, and reconnaissance units. The branch's central component was the Panzer units, equipped with fully tracked, turreted, armored fighting vehicles. In 1934, a special tank crew uniform was created consisting of black trousers, double-breasted jacket, and an oversized beret covering a padded crash helmet. The jackets were dark to conceal stains and double-breasted for warmth. These jackets were intended to be used only as working clothing for armor crews. The beret initially displayed just a white cockade insignia. Over time, various other insignia was used, including the metal cap badges from the visor cap. A machine embroidered eagle, wreath, and cockade were finally introduced, first in white and later in grey. The branch adopted the rose pink arm of service color first used in 1919 by motorized transport troops. The first panzer jackets featured branch piping on the collar and a special rhomboid shaped collar patch worn by all ranks. The black patch featured a metal skull, the traditional insignia of German cavalry, piped in rose pink branch color. Rank was displayed on shoulder boards for officers and on the shoulder straps for NCOs. Enlisted men wore standard sleeve badges sewn to a black backing. NCO braid was not applied to the collar. The soldier's company was identified by numeral embossed on the shoulder strap button. Unit identification was done by the use of ciphers and numbers on the shoulders, embroidered in branch color for enlisted men and junior NCOs, and rendered in white metal for senior NCOs and yellow metal for officers. Regiments were designated by Arabic numerals, while specific unit types were identified by ciphers. Anti-tank regiments were a P cipher. Armored trains were an E cipher. Training regiments were an L cipher. Panzer regiments were only the numeral of their unit. A number of changes were made to the black AFV uniform before the war, and the uniform continued to be updated during hostilities. The national insignia, or breast eagle, was added by order beginning on 11 November 1935, rendered in white on a black background. A second pattern jacket emerged in 1936 with various modifications, such as functional lapels and a larger collar which now had a hook and eye closure. Designed to replace the 1934 model, both styles were seen in use simultaneously. In April 1937, the use of lemon yellow branch piping was approved for the Divisional Signals Battalions of the Panzer Divisions. From 1938, officers privately purchased black versions of the new style officer's cap. Similar to the field grey enlisted men's field cap, it had the addition of silver piping on the crown seam and front scallop. The black crash helmet and beret proved to be unpopular, and during the 1939 Polish campaign, crews were seen wearing the field grey cap, despite regulations forbidding the mixture of field grey and black uniforms. On 27 March 1940, a new field cap in black wool was introduced for all ranks. Insignia was originally white on black, with a mouse grey version quickly replacing it. A roundel of national colors on black backing was worn on the flap of the cap, with a sutash of branch-colored piping. Officers' caps were similar with the addition of silver piping and insignia. Color piping began to disappear in 1940 and was officially deleted in 1942 on new jackets, though as always older patterns were worn throughout the war. Numbered buttons and shoulder numerals also disappeared for security reasons. Limited use was made of cloth slip-ons bearing unit identifications, though many crewmen sewed their shoulder straps down to prevent snagging, making them impossible to use. In 1940, the white breast eagle was replaced with a subdued mouse gray version. The color suit tash was discontinued on the field cap in July 1942, and shortly after, a black version of the new army field cap with button flaps was introduced, bearing a combination insignia in either trapezoid or T-shape. In 1943, this cap was replaced by a peaked field cap, and the mobile troops were renamed the Armored Troops. These were the final changes to the successful and popular Black Panzer uniform, which remained in use to the end of the war in 1945. The German army continued to expand after the beginning of the war. The assault artillery branch was created to operate the growing inventory of fully tracked, turretless, and sometimes open-topped self-propelled guns. The assault artillery was tasked with providing fire support for the infantry. The black uniform worn by tank crews were considered too conspicuous for assault artillery crews who might have to dismount in forward areas, and so a copy of the second pattern panzer jacket was created for them in field grey. Early jackets had a dark green collar in the same manner as the regular field blouse. Photographic evidence points to the use of standard Litzen on the prototype jacket. 
It is also believed that some of the earliest jackets with dark green collars had rhomboid collar tabs and matching dark green material, piped in red with metal skull devices. A small number of jackets with these patches apparently saw field use. The dark green collar was changed to a matching field grey collar sometime before the campaign in France, and the collar tabs followed suit. Shoulder straps on the field grey assault gun jacket were the same as on the standard field blouse. The dark green base gave way to field grey in 1940, with other changes also occurring such as the deletion of company buttons and regimental numbers. Also in 1940, the breast eagle changed from white on dark green to grey. The cat badges also changed from white to grey at the same time the breast eagles changed. In January 1941, the crash helmet and beret was officially discontinued, and the use of the standard field cap, which many had already been wearing, was made official. In 1942, the soutache disappeared from the field grey field cap, and the so-called M42 cap was issued soon after. In January 1943, the assault artillery branch was ordered not to wear the skull patches on the collar. At first, they wore plain field grey or dark green rhomboid patches piped in red. Over time, assault gun crews began using the standard second and third pattern lits and collar patches from the regular field blouse, stitched to the blank rhomboids. Sometimes the litson was sewn directly to the collar, or mounted on dark green backings. Officers had begun wearing their larger doppel litson badges from the service uniform in 1942, though the skull patches were apparently more popular until they were prohibited in January 1943. In the summer of 1943, the popular peaked field cap was introduced. Later in the war, the breast eagle was rendered in mouse grey on field grey backing. There were many exceptions to the general rules, and some units continued to wear unit insignia on shoulder straps. The Großdeutschland units wore their special unit cipher, and artillery instruction units in Germany reportedly wore black uniforms instead of field grey. When the Field Uniform 44 tunic was introduced, its triangular breast eagle was also added to the assault gun wrapper. This was the final official change for the assault artillery uniform. Until 1941, the only branch permitted to wear the field grey assault gun uniform was the assault artillery. As new branches evolved and a wider range of armoured vehicles were developed, use of the black and field grey AFE jackets was extended to other types of units, and the system of branch colours and insignia was expanded to accommodate them. Anti-tank units of the various infantry and armored divisions began the war with towed anti-tank guns and thus had no need for special vehicle clothing. In 1940, the introduction of the first self-propelled anti-tank gun, the Panzerjäger I, brought with it the issue of the black panzer uniform. Towed gun crews continued to use the standard field uniform. Both towed and self-propelled anti-tank units were distinguished by rose pink branch color piping and the P cipher. The use of unit numbers quickly faded, and the P cipher was also not often seen on the uniform of enlisted men, though some NCOs and officers retained them. In 1942 and 1943, the number of self-propelled anti-tank guns multiplied, and the field grey assault gun uniform was issued, with insignia in rose pink instead of red. Initially, the collar patches were on dark green backings, and shortly after, the patches had branch color piping added. These, too, were replaced with death's head collar patches in either field grey or black, piped in the rose pink branch color. At the same time, lits and collar tabs with field grey backings and pink piping was also adopted. During the war, the passive term Panzerabwehr, or tank defense in English, was replaced with the more aggressive Panzerjäger, which meant tank hunter. Towards the end of the war, some anti-tank units were retitled yet again as tank destroyer units. The confusing number of insignia variations for anti-tank units was addressed by an order on 7 May 1944. Towed anti-tank guns were to wear the assault gun jacket with field grade death's head patches. Self-propelled anti-tank and tank destroyer units were to also wear this insignia combination only if they belonged to infantry, light infantry, or mountain troop divisions. Units attached directly to army or corps headquarters also wore this combination, with the exception of self-propelled anti-tank and tank destroyer units of the Panzer and Panzer Grenadier divisions who were to wear the black panzer uniform with black death's head patches. This uniform was also worn by any anti-tank unit attached directly to army or corps headquarters and equipped with the Panzerjäger Tiger. Armored car crews in the divisional reconnaissance units of tank and motorized infantry divisions wore the black panzer uniform until 1943. They were distinguished from tank units by the gothic letter A. Armored car crews and reconnaissance battalions of the light divisions were golden yellow branch color, reinforcing their lineage to the cavalry. 
On 31 July 1938, all reconnaissance units changed the golden yellow branch color. On 6 July 1939, the branch color of motorized reconnaissance units changed once more to copper brown. Since this color was unique, the A cipher was ordered removed, though senior NCOs and officers often retained the metal letter insignia. On 25 March 1943, all mobile and armored troops were reorganized into the Panzertruppen, and newly created armored reconnaissance battalions changed back to rose pink branch color with A ciphers. In mid-1943, the field gray assault gun uniform was also issued to armored reconnaissance battalions, intended only for those troops fighting from armored half-tracks, while the armored car troops retained the black panzer uniform. The term reconnaissance encompasses a variety of units utilizing different types of vehicles, including motorcycles, bicycles, horses, armored cars, and half-tracks. It was difficult to maintain uniformity of branch colors and uniform styles, even within a single unit. The list of references in the video description will point the viewer to more detailed information than is possible here. In March 1943, half-track crews and Panzer Grenadier battalions were ordered into the field gray assault gun uniform. It should be emphasized that the majority of Panzer Grenadier battalions used trucks. The most common insignia was metal green piping on shoulder and collar insignia. The tabs had second or third pattern litzen, though there is evidence of limited use of grass green piped field gray patches with the death's head symbol. On the day Germany invaded France, engineers manning armored vehicles were issued the black panzer uniform. A number of full and half track vehicles were used throughout the war for engineering purposes. Since the black piping wouldn't show up against the uniform, a special black and white twist piping was used to differentiate the branch of service. Beginning in 1941, the field gray assault gun uniform started to appear in engineer units. Black piping was worn on the uniform, with either death's head or lits and patches on the collar. As noted earlier, signal troops were authorized to wear lemon yellow insignia on the black uniform. But additionally, it seems a small number of signal troops wore the field gray uniform late in the war as well, with either Litzen or death's head collar patches. Separate from the assault artillery, which was intended for direct fire infantry support, the armored artillery was equipped with self-propelled guns, armored, fully tracked, turretless vehicles, used for indirect fire in the same manner as the standard towed artillery batteries. Crews of self-propelled guns generally wore the field gray assault gun uniform beginning in 1942, when the Vespa and Hummel vehicles were first introduced. Finally, crews of armored artillery observation vehicles wore the black uniform with red branch of service piping. The letter B was worn on their shoulder straps over the number of their parent division. This has not been an exhaustive list of troop and unit categories that wore either the black panzer uniform or the field gray assault gun uniform. Others included armored train crews, half-track mounted rocket artillery crews, and even propaganda companies of the armored forces. A variety of other clothing was worn by AFV crews including denim jackets modeled after the wool wrappers, other denim work clothing, tropical uniforms, winter clothing, etc. Their insignia was generally modeled after that worn on the wool jackets. The wool vehicle jackets were popular not just for the functionality, but their sharp appearance, and a number of deviations from the regulations can be noted in period photos, including use for evening wear, parades, or even wedding attire. The variety of uniform and insignia combinations worn by German armored vehicle crews in the Second World War was staggering. And this video can only begin to suggest the enormity of the subject. The video description has a guide to recommended reading for those interested in further study.